Hello and welcome to my gurgling stomach. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only ever listen to this or any of the sessions on this podcast or any of my podcasts when you can safely close your eyes and uh, just to let you know or to remind you that these podcasts are available all over the internet on lots of different podcast hosts uh, whether on your tablet or your phone and a majority of people that listen seem to be listening on their phone so it's available on iTunes uh, TuneIn Stitcher iHeartRadio Spotify uh, it's you know a big long list cast box so yeah there's lots of different podcast hosts that you can listen to this on or you could just go to the website letmeboyyoutosleep.com and you can search by date by month you know for if you've got like a specific one that you like from the past so all of my Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings are on that website. It sort of depends on what you prefer. It's about what is best for you and what is most useful. Uh, so it's if you there's, there's a specific, I don't say Spotify for example, might be your favourite place to listen to stuff. So it's totally, you know, down to you, it's up to you what you feel is comfortable and also all of my podcasts are on Spreaker.com that's where the home is for all of my podcasts <sighs> that is boring isn't it, what a boring introduction I basically should have, I could have equally have just done a juggling act for you then Totally, I said to you, yeah, I'm now juggling 17 balls. Now there's a kitten in there. 17 balls in a kitten. Now there's a set of kitchen cutlery. I'm juggling them all. I'm now on a tightrope, juggling them all. And I've got a tight, tight rope, tight, tight rope between the two buildings I'm on, living in. And you know, it's like, well, we can't see you do it. That's the thing I could pretend to be anything couldn't I I could pretend to be anywhere I could say I'm now in the Bahamas enjoying a lovely tequila rum or whatever they call them and I don't know drinking drinking some Horlicks out of a coconut shell watching the sunset or rise it's the same, isn't it? Really, it looks the same either way. At one point, I suppose. Um, but I'm not in the Bahamas. I tell you where I am. I'm in my living room, and there is no light. And no, it's not because it's dark. You know, I don't want anyone to sort of writing and saying yeah but it's night time it's always dark it's never any light but there is there's a electricity um, but there is no electricity because I've just had a power cut so I'm sitting <laughs> in my flat realising that there is nothing to do this I can't use the internet I can't watch television I can listen to the radio on my phone because um, I've got enough data to do that 
so it's a case of going to sleep which I didn't I don't really feel like doing because it's too early and I thought well I might as well make my recordings you know it's a lot earlier than I normally do them it's now yeah it's seven minutes past one in the morning and this is the second recording that I've made the, I did the deep sleep whisper one earlier and the electricist has been off since I don't know quarter past eleven something like that um, what was it earlier I was trying to think nine ten Nine, ten. So I watched eight to nine. There's a program about parking tickets. So I was watching that. Then I took. Oh yeah, I went down in the garden. Then at nine o'clock I came back up because, yeah, and then I watched. I don't know what I watched. What did I watch at nine o'clock? Must have watched something. Something was on telly. Because I was working on my website the jasonnewland.com website while I was watching this thing on telly oh, I wonder what it was so 9 to 10 oh yeah there's a documentary so I was watching a documentary and then at 10 o'clock I watched another documentary about um, hoarders, people like that fill their their property with lots of stuff. So I was watching that, and then uh, a film a film came on at eleven. And yeah, probably couldn't have been more than 15 minutes in. And the electric went out. So it's nearly two hours. So the electric, you know, I was sitting there, my friend was watching telly while I was just on the computer and we were just chatting and he was trying to watch the movie and I was talking and and I was just working on the website and you know while I was doing that and then suddenly the lights go out the television well actually it's the television going out that I noticed first even though the lights went out at the same time but the laptop stayed on because it's got a full battery so it's not you know it doesn't need to to be connected to the electric so it's still on now so I've got a little bit of light in the room from the laptop which is good otherwise it would be absolutely well there'd be no light in it at all apart from from I guess the phone because there's a, the, the screen has got a little bit of light coming out of it. And I was sitting there and I thought, hmm. For a minute I thought, there must be a fuse has blown. Because the laptop's still on. 
you know, I hadn't kind of connected the, the, it's got a battery and it's running off its own battery. And And then I thought, well, I wonder if it is a fuse. And then I looked. And the internet has gone as well, which means, well, I suppose it could still be a fuse, but I don't think the fuse, yeah, I don't think, yeah, anyways, I wasn't sure, but I looked out the window, because sometimes, if you want to know what's going outside, the best thing to do is to look outside the window. Great inventions. I sometimes wonder if windows originally were just made of wood you know a bit like in you know this European like I, I don't I don't want to be um, I don't want to generalise here but I've seen sometimes in like France or maybe Spain where they have like wooden shutters and they might have windows as well but they have the wooden sh wooden shutters where which I think is a really good idea, is because then they can have their fiesta and probably to block out the sun. Because the thing is, if you're going to go to sleep in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day, then I suppose it makes sense to block out the sun so that it's less warm, so that way you can you know, get to sleep maybe, I don't know. I mean, I suppose technically I have a siesta every day. It's like there's light shining into my window. I wonder what that might be, the moon. Yeah, I think it's the moon. Don't normally get to see the moon. And so I looked out the window because, you know, it's glass, it's see-through and great invention that, isn't it? But I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. And uh, I looked out and the whole of the block of flats that I live in, my, my block, it's not mine, but you know where I live, all the buildings that are connected to each other other all out the whole lot completely nothing going on apart from I think a couple of people had candles so so yeah so that was it's like oh but then the other side of the fence all their lights were on as normal and I thought, oh, I mean, I was, well, I was going to say I was pleased for them, but I wasn't. I was a bit envious. It's like, oh, you know. And so I looked out and I thought, yeah, it's a power cut. And then I went to phone the council used to have the emergency telephone number on my phone but for some reason it's not on there anymore so I don't know where it went and so I tried to because I couldn't use the internet but I've got a bit of data on my phone uh, with my monthly plan on my phone it's a page ago but it gives me one what does it give me I think it's like one megabytes oh, 
or one gigabyte, 100 megabytes, something, I don't know. It's not a lot, but it's enough to, I mean, generally I don't use it in a month because most of what I do is online, like on the, you know, the broadband. You know, it's weird though, just as I'm talking, the lights have all come on. So the electricity is, has come back on. So, that's nice, I suppose. It's nice to be able to share that with you. But, uh, this, it was kind of weird because when it went off, I was like, and it just shows how reliant I am on the old electricity because, especially at night, I mean, during the day as well, but if it's light, you at least you can see what you're doing, and you know, it's. If it, you know, sort of making a sandwich or something like that, it's a lot easier when you can see the sandwich or the bread. Uh, just little things like going to the toilet, you know, be able to. I mean, I I quite like the idea. I said to my friend, "It's good." Now we've got the uh, the power cut. I've now got an excuse to wee on the floor. But I didn't, well, I don't know if I did or not. I'll have to check. I've done that a few times over the years. I didn't even realise I kind of got up in the night, not turned the light on, uh, and just left a bit of a puddle. And I think, well, is it me or is it someone else? But that's the thing when you share a house with other people and it, other people you know like six people are using the bathroom the benefit of that is you can blame others for the mess but when you live alone and you're the only one using the toilet you're the only one doing the washing up it's kind of I'm not connecting washing up and going to the toilet uh completely it's the same thing but I can't moan that the washing up's not been done because it's me that hasn't done it there's only so much I can blame on Andre it's really weird suddenly having light again I've forgotten what it was like it's a great invention isn't it light bulb old Ronald McDonald was a genius <laughs> that's tickled me I don't know why um, so yeah then the lights went out as I said the, 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 and I put Andre in his cage because I didn't want him running around and me not seeing where he is because I didn't want to end up tripping over him or treading on him or, or you know, who knows what he'd get up to. He's not enough when he when I can see him. He's not enough when I'm watching him. Imagine what he'd do if he knew that I couldn't see what he was doing. You know, he'd be setting up booby traps. You know, putting string that he'd be tying my shoelaces together and stuff like that. It just, he's so naughty. And then I went downstairs because it's a bit boring up here. There wasn't really, you know, there wasn't a lot to do. 
So I went downstairs. I thought that, you know, everyone else in the flats would kind of congregate outside and have a little chat, you know. What's going on? I can't believe this has happened. Is your electricity off too? Yeah, mine was. Mine still is. Is yours as well? Yeah, that's why I'm out here. And, you know, you could just like say, well, we could share stories about the experience. So what happened to you then, Tracy? Well, I was watching telly and the the electricity went off. Uh, what about you, Jason? Yeah, I was watching telly and the electricity went off. And what about you, Stuart? Well, I, I wasn't watching telly and the electricity went off. Well, how do you know it went off if you weren't watching telly? Oh, I had a light on. Oh, okay. And what about you, uh, Bob? Um, no, I'm fine. Electricity's on where I am. Well, what are you what are you doing here then? Oh, I just was wondering what you all up to. Uh, just fancy the chat. Seem like you seem like you all up, you know, having fun. Uh, I bought a flask of coffee if anyone would like some. Well, that's nice. Thanks, Bob, but it's a bit unusual, isn't it? He said, yeah, I know, but I'm out of tea bags. I said, no, no, not about the the coffee. Although that is, you know, yeah, not, yeah, it's a bit unusual, coffee. He said, yeah, but, you know, it reminds me of the war. Because during the war, we used to have to have uh, blackouts. We used to, you know, turn all the lights off and all that stuff, so that the, the, the you know, the, the planes, the enemy planes, couldn't see the buildings and stuff like that. I said, Bob, but you're 32. He said, Yeah, I know, but. Um, I'm the reincarnation of a of a well it was a museum worker from the 1940s what? he said look it doesn't matter the main thing is I bought some coffee I said yeah but it's not the same without digestives is it? He said, what? I said, so can you hear me? I'm, I'm just here. He said, that's rude. You know I've got hearing issues. I was like, well, I didn't know that. And I wasn't being rude, but I'm sorry. But what? What? You, <sighs> Digestives go with tea, not coffee. He said, that, that's enough, I've had enough. I couldn't believe what he did next. He pulled a banana out. He bit the end off the banana while it was still in its skin. Bit the end of the banana off. And he said, oh, I've had enough of this. And he stormed off. When I say stormed off, he he turned around and he walked into a wall. But you know, then he turned around again and he uh, we started digging for a while, which was a bit unusual, like digging with his hands. And I thought, you sure you're a reincarnation of a, a dog? And we all laughed because everyone could. We all had a lot of telepathy going on that night. It's weird in my area. Whenever the uh, electric goes out, we can all read each other's minds. It's true, I said to them, I said, but I can read your mind. So when, when the electricity goes out, I can read people's minds. I said that to my neighbour. And she said, all right then, what am I thinking? I said, you're thinking when is the electricity going to come back on again? And she said, you're absolutely right. That is what I was thinking. 
I said, see, told you. And they all held me on their shoulders and walked me through the streets. Fireworks went off. It's a very wonderful experience. So yeah, took lots of pictures. Got a whole, f a whole, you know, album worth of pictures from that scenario that I made up. So I went downstairs thinking, oh, there'll be lots of people there, and I get to talk to the one of my neighbours that I like, and did not happen at all. Nobody around. So I went outside. Nobody around. Went out the back. Nobody around. It was so... I suppose it's possible everyone was in bed. Asleep. It's possible. I suppose. But... I wasn't and what I thought you know what I'm gonna phone up and find out what's going on and I went online on my phone and uh, I found out the council the emergency no the phone of the council they said we value your custom, but unfortunately we're closed. So I thought, oh, well, there's no point listening to her then, is there? She's closed. So then I found out the emergency. Well, I looked up the emergency, and it said it didn't have a number. And so I thought, oh. And then I went online and I searched power cut. Yeah, you know, help for power cut. And there was a phone line to report a power cut. So I phoned that up. I'm hoping it's a free telephone number. Because I was on the phone for about 20 minutes. And they also valued my, uh, my time and my custom and my patients, they were, you know, very much valued my patients, they kept telling me, and they said, normally it's a, there's a 20 second wait to be answered, but tonight, due to all the power cuts around the country, an excessive amount, it's going to take five minutes, which I found a bit strange, considering I'd been on 20 minutes waiting and then about two minutes after that message, the phone answered. And it was a very lovely lady. I'm guessing brunette. With brunette hair and brown eyes. With, I'd say, one earring in each ear. And... I would say she's probably wearing a nice loose sweater and she used to wear a watch but now she just gets the time from her phone. I mean, I'm just guessing but you know that's kind of what I got from kind of what I felt from when I spoke to her. I didn't ask her these questions because it wasn't valid at the time. I didn't Plus, it's kind of always after the event, isn't it? Oh, I should have asked her whether she wear a watch or not. What kind of top she's wearing, and does she wear comfortable shoes? And does she ever ever like to roll around in the sand when she's on holiday? And when's the last time she made a sandcastle or a snowman or a snow castle? So yeah, but they didn't come to mind at the time. But now as I think about it, I wish I had. 
she had a very lovely voice and it was quite nice because she said do you feel at risk at the moment I said uh, well only uh, the only risk I feel is falling in love with your voice and she said uh, please sir that's very creepy can you stop I <laughs> said oh, okay no she didn't I didn't say that to her I said uh, no I'd like to uh, cause I liked, I've got a very professional voice that I like to put on because I like people to have I don't know just to show respect for them and their job to show that I'm not just messing around that I'm you know taking the whole process very seriously so I said to her hello I would like to report a power cut and she said would you like to okay you can't take your postcode please so I can find out where you live Okay, my postcode is blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you what my postcode is, am I? And I told her my postcode. And she said, so what's happened then? Well, uh, the lights went off. I was sitting at my laptop. And uh, I think at the time I was scratching my left knee because it was itchy because I'd been out for a walk previously and there'd been some gnats because it's been quite a nice day and they the gnats were in a tree and they came out and bit me and therefore my knee is itchy and she said did you realize there was a lot of ease were you trying to make that all rhyme I said no I wasn't trying to make it rhyme. I don't have the time to make up <laughs> rhymes. And she said, there you go, and again. It's like it comes naturally to you. I said, I don't know about that. But once I owned a rat. And she said, really? I said, no. She said, well, why did you say it then? I don't know why I said it. I suppose I was trying to show off to you because you seem like quite a nice person. She said, well, thank you very much. And then she said, anyway, what, what the situation is, is there, we've had lots of calls from your area about the power cut. I kind of felt like she was saying that to put me at ease in case I thought I was making it up. I knew I wasn't making it up. It's a bit like, it's okay, other people have also called in. You're not imagining it. No, I'm not imagining it. The TV went off. Trust me. I know when the TV goes off. And uh, she said, what do you mean? I said, well, because the screen goes dark and there's nothing on it. She said, yeah, but why would you verbalise that? Why would that be an, outlier, an out, out loud sentence? What would be the point? And I said, listen, I don't have an answer for that. She said, anyway, the technicians are on their way there and they're going to look into it and they will find out what's wrong with it and they'll fix it it should be done between 1 and 2 and I said what? because I like to do that so the person repeats the entire sentence it's really good if they just said a really really long sentence Here's something you can do if you just want to have a bit of fun. Um, if you phone a call centre up, I shouldn't tell you this, but if you phone a call centre up and you buy, let's say you buy insurance on the phone, they will say to you, 
um, I've got all this information that I have to read to you unless you're happy for me to send it to you by text or by email if you say to them no I'm happy for you to read it to me they could be there for the next 15 or 20 minutes reading out this big long script I'm not saying to do it but if you're dealing with someone on the phone and they haven't (laughs) treated you in a way that you'd like to be treated then at the end of the call say yeah I'll, I'll, I'll listen if you tell me the script you read it to me and then you can go and make yourself some dinner or a cup of tea go for a jog and you get back and they'll still be they'll still be talking and if you really if you really want to be awkward you can say when they say did you get that bit said oh no sorry I didn't can you read it again yeah I'm not saying do that but just you could have fun with it possibly I don't know I'd never suggest anything other than wonderfulness for everybody ah yeah so so the power went out (sighs) and I I went outside and all of the street lights, most of the street lights were out. Normally they don't go out till about half twelve, one, but they were out, they'd already gone out because of the power cut. And I looked up at the sky and it was these stars and the sky was really clear because there was no street lights and it was lovely and I thought to myself there and then I'm going to look up again one day I am another night in the future I shall look up at the sky I don't know when I don't know where I'll be but I'm going to look up at those stars again and I thought should I stick it in my diary you know have a particular date that I'm going to do it but I thought no why spoil the surprise then I thought will it be a surprise if I'm doing it myself I didn't have an answer for that. Can you surprise yourself? I think so. I did. I had uh, someone stop me in the street asking me to do a survey and I was friendly to them. Now that surprised me. So yeah, I suppose we can all surprise ourselves at times. I suppose. I was just thinking I haven't had I think the I think they changed the name of the sweets. But there's a thing called opal throats. Opal fruits. 
they might now be called Starburst which again is I don't know why because the adverts were really good and the song that came with the advert was I won't sing it because um, it's just too stimulating for everyone so I won't sing it but the words were opal fruits made to make your mouth water but it was you know in a tune very catchy as well yeah it was quite a nice tune it's a bit like the better have a bowl of cocoa pops you know just one sentence but but in a tune sung it sounded like more than a sentence it sounded more like a delightful idea but these opal fruits they were nice I used to like them however they used to be square different colours, different flavours and in a tube or a square tube or whatever they basically it's like they were on top of each other with one big wrapper that covered all of it however each one had its own wrapping which is I think is a great idea especially if you're sharing them of course I don't like to share anything but you know for those that do like to share you could I like to be shared with I like free stuff free sweets free chocolate free cakes free food yeah free I just do um, and if you're going to share something especially if you're in an office environment or work or whatever it's nice to get some free chocolate but when someone like puts a piece on the desk it's like no I'm not eating that or if I do eat it I'll have to remove a layer of the chocolate which touched the desk it's just a personal preference for me but with the opal fruits they were covered in this wrapper and it was kind of like a it's very much like the toilet paper that I used to have when I was at school you know that see through tracing paper toilet paper so these you know the little little tiny little wrappers that would wrap around the the opal fruits the individual opal fruits But they didn't always come off so you'd get part of it off but sometimes it'd stick to the opal fruit and it'd have paper on it and that didn't work for me I really didn't enjoy that and had there been internet at the time when I was a kid I probably would have posted something on Facebook about it of course there would have had to be Facebook as well but didn't like that another sweet I used to like was called Toffos they were really nice they basically toffees again wrapped up individually in paper probably the same kind of paper and sometimes it gets stuck as well but peeling off the paper gave a I don't know with the toffos it was more of a reward I think they were toffos but there was another one which is similar but it had chocolate inside the toffee with chocolate inside oh I used to like sweet corn not sweet corn I do like sweet corn I used to like uh, honeycomb. 
It's amazing how I get those two names mixed up. Sweet corn and honeycomb. Sweet corn, honey. Maybe it's the sweet and the honey. Corn. Honeycomb, corn. Oh. I'm sure there's some kind of uh, logical explanation for that. I remember when I was probably 17, no, 18, maybe 19, 18, 18, I don't know, 18 or 19, and I worked in this factory and I bought some honeycomb from the shop and I was on my break so I took it into work with me because unfortunately I wasn't allowed to make honeycomb at work so I had to buy it from the shop the honeycomb machine took up too much room the honeycomb making machine and the beehive and you know it's just there wasn't enough room and uh, not every place at work likes bees I think they're the bees knees but that's just me and I remember sitting down on a, a stack of boxes but unmade boxes they weren't made they were just flat um, like a pallet of flat unmade boxes so basically how it worked is you'd pick them up but pick a flat box up you'd open it up and then you'd put down you'd just kind of twist and whatever and it would be very easy once you get used to it to put the boxes together but I wasn't because I didn't have I wasn't sitting inside a box but on top of the pallet where the unmade boxes were I wasn't sitting on a pallet of made boxes because then it wouldn't have supported my body because they were boxes and I might have damaged the boxes actually so I didn't do that and I was sitting there and I was eating this honeycomb so it was basically the big bar of honeycomb and I basically stuck my mouth together it was so much honey and so much comb whatever and it was like oh it's lovely but it was so chewy Basically, I did kind of basically stuck my teeth together, and uh, I had to use all my strength of my jaw to open up my mouth again. I thought, oh no, what if my jaw stays like this? And I'll be talking like this forever because my teeth will be stuck together. And I wonder, I suppose it's possible to talk, but it's a bit muffled. But uh, I didn't realise at the time that things like that, just like everything else, comes to pass. And then I had to go back to work and just wait for the honeycomb to eventually reduce its gluiness. And it was a bit of a weird day really because 
the we were working in the warehouse and the forklift driver who is moving pallets like from one side of the warehouse to the other ready to you know put them onto the lorries to be taken around the, well, around the world actually but around the country at least and the the lift bit from the lorry that connects with the the back of the lorry that connected with the uh, the metal thing part of the bank where you like move this like little metal connection it's uh, it started to move and it was giving way and there was a chance of an accident and everyone said what well, what could we do we need something to stick it together it's like but there's nothing we've got nothing I said, "Well, that's super glue," and they said, "Don't like this. This is, this is heavy metal. Super glue's not for that kind of stuff. We need something." And I thought, "I know. Watch this." And I pulled a bit of uh, honeycomb out from between my teeth, and I put that between the metal. And to this day, apart from a statue of me that was made in my honour that bit of metal those two bit of metal are still stuck together from that honeycomb that's when I realised that my superpower was honeycomb related somehow the mixture of the honeycomb in my mouth became the most powerful adhesive ever known the donkeys and that seemed like a really really good story <laughs> to lead us closer to the end of this pointless silly session yeah 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 I'm so glad the lights are on although I made a sandwich by the light from the laptop it's really weird it was it was kind of weirdly romantic and I spend so much time with my laptop. It's mainly working. So to share a lunch with him, or her, or him, or her, I don't know, whatever, her, it. To share a lunch with it it was kind of nice. It was nice to take a break from working because that's what we really need, normally do together. It very much is a working relationship me and the laptop so to just spend a little bit of quality time me eating my sandwich and the laptop just sitting there staring at me looking longingly probably hoping that I would eat with my mouth closed but nope I'm single I get to eat with my mouth open it's one of the benefits of being single So it is nice to
be back in the modern world I do wonder though what it would have been like you know, hundreds of years ago where night time is dark time to go to bed so all that sleep during the winter I quite like the idea of that going to bed at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and not getting up again till 8 in the morning oh, that's a nice sleep nice and long nice and long I like yeah sounds nice Well, I have done that in the past. There has been times when I have slept quite late after going to bed quite early. You know, like eight o'clock in the evening and then still not getting up till one o'clock in the afternoon. But it's quite rare for me because I like to go to bed about five in the morning and get up about two in the afternoon. That's nine hours. Is, that, is it really nine hours? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. Wow, well, that's nine hours. That's quite a. That's quite a, a vigorous sleep, isn't it? I'm quite impressed with myself. Not for the first time. I was once impressed when I trimmed my uh, landlady's hedge very good trim it looked really nice afterwards it looked like she hadn't trimmed it for for years I said I can't believe you let it grow so long she said yeah but no one no one seems to take any notice of it anymore, so I didn't think anyone would really notice. I didn't, no one really looks at it. So, what does it matter? I said, Yeah, but you need to take care of your little hedge. And she said, But why? What? Why? I said, I said, but it's a bit of pruning is quite nice just to keep it tidy and because it was inside the hedge it's in so in the garden and she said well no one sees my hedge anymore I said but yeah, what about if there's an emergency someone might see your hedge in an emergency she said what do you mean I said well you know, in an emergency, it might someone that you don't know might, you know, see your hedge. 
Sí, sí, wow. Así. Well, let's say if you if your cat gets stuck in a tree and you have to phone a fire service, they'll have to come into your garden and they'll see your hedge. And she said, oh. Are we still talking about the hedge outside? I said, yeah. She said, oh, thank goodness. I said, why? She said, it was just those trimmers. They look really, really sharp. And they're a bit big. And, uh. You know, that fancy, just not be worried. I said, why? Why are you worried? She said, well, you're wearing a blindfold, for one. I said, yeah, I know, but it's part of the creative process. She said, that's silly. I said, why is that silly? She said, it's silly, you're silly. I said, it takes one to know one. She said, fair enough. Would you like some f flab? I said, what? She said, would you like, <laughs> would you like some flab? <laughs> I don't even know why that's funny. Would you like some flan? What kind of flan is it? Well, it's a pear flan. Pear flan and ice cream. Do you fancy some? I said, yeah, that sounds lovely. She said, oh, <laughs> all right then. And she started laughing. I said, why? Why are you laughing? She said, I don't know. You started laughing and it made me laugh. It's a little bit like um, sneezing and yawning and farting, isn't it? It's very contagious. I said, okay. You think farting's contagious? She said, yeah. I said, well, I don't understand. She said, well, go on to an underground train station. Go to an underground train during the summer and then tell me after a journey all through the underground, tell me that farts aren't contagious. I said, okay, I don't really know what you're talking about, but she said, yep, you shall find out. I said, yeah, it's a lot of hassle though, isn't it? It means traveling all the way to London. She said, yeah, but it's worth it. And then she went, oh, there's one more thing before you go. I said, what's that? Oh, lovely. Thank you. She said, there's no problem. There's plenty more of that where it came from. And on that note, I should say good night. Night night. Good night. Blah blah blah. Good night.